Hi, I'm Austin. And I'm Jackson. And we're going to teach you how to work on the carburetor of a 120 Polaris snowmobile. So for this, we're going to need this and the 10 millimeter. We're going to put the 10 millimeter on here. Or you could use this one. Or we could put it on there, but this way is faster. We're going to take it off in order so we know how to put it back on. So first, we're going to take this off. Let's close this. And last. And and this part will likely still be connected to your snowmobile. But what we're going to want to do is take this end off. And you do it by twisting it up and pulling it out. So when you get your carburetor off, you just twist it and just get it to unlock from there. And now we have the carburetor out of the snowmobile. Let's see how that choke works. Can you show them? Basically, it just shuts off the air forces the fuel to come up inside the carburetor. Okay, let's learn a little bit more about this carburetor. This is what you pull on with your choke cable. That's what opens up the little butterfly or closes the little butterfly in here in order to choke it. You turn it this way. This is your throttle. This is where this plate sets against your idle screw. As long as that plate is returning all the way back, you're returning to idle against that screw right there. This part on the bottom is called the float bolt. This is where your fuel is held, awaiting the engine to be running, and then it sucks it up into the carburetor, and the air from the engine pulls it through the carburetor, out this end, and into the engine. Let's turn it around again. Again, this is where the fuel comes into your carburetor, down into your float bowl, and we'll learn more about that inside. This is where you set your idle. This is where you do your idle air adjustment. Remember, two full turns out, or as I like to do, four half turns. And this is your pilot jet. This is what controls the idle of your snowmobile. If your snowmobile won't stay idling, this is probably a pretty good candidate. Take this jet out, and we can take a look at the inside. So this is called a 120 idle jet, or pilot jet. So as you can see, there's no hole through the middle on a 120 jet, because it sits on the outside. Get a better picture of that for you. But these holes on the outside feed through this super tiny hole in the bottom. And that super tiny hole gets plugged. And that's why your 120 won't stay idling unless you give it fuel or choke. The next one we talked about was this fuel idle air jet. So Jackson, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn that thing in two full turns or four half turns. So put your screwdriver on there so what we like to do to make sure we know where it was when it started is we seat it all the way, nice and gentle because you can break the tip off. So we're going to go in, out, this way. We're going to do, count it with me, go turn, half turn. One, one, two, three, snug. So that's four half turns or two full turns. Now we know where our setting is. So now you can take it all the way out. That way we can put it back the same way when we're done. So this is why you don't want to over tighten it. That tiny, tiny, tiny little tip breaks off and it's stuck inside your carburetor. 
Make sure you don't misplace this spring either. Pretty important. So if that's plugged, down inside that tiny little hole, the engine won't run either. So it's really important to get carb cleaner down inside that little hole. Get that one clean. Make sure that those are really clean or your snowmobile won't idle because those are the two smallest holes on the carburetor. For this next section, we're going to flip the carburetor over and look at the bottom of the float bowl. At this point, there might have already been a little bit of gas pouring out. Make sure you're on a nice, durable table and let's open up the bottom of this. So Jackson, if you'd put the 14 millimeter onto that ratchet, and take that off. the screw. This is what it looks like in the bottom. This one's a little bit dirty. Can you pull that float bowl off for me? Very carefully wiggle it back and forth. There's a little gasket in there. There we go. There's the rubber gasket around the side. That thing is really nasty. So we'll have to make sure we get that one nice and clean. And then this part that you see in yellow is called the float. To take that out is quite simple. Pull this little pin out from here. Set it down very carefully so you know where it's at. And you very carefully lift this float out of here. That is your needle, the little white piece. The yellow piece is your float, and you can see the needle is spring loaded. If you have a carburetor that's leaking and leaking gas everywhere, it's coming from this and that. And then the second most important part of this after you do your pilot jets is your main jet. So that's what's inside this tube here. That's another flathead screwdriver in there. And we'll take that out. There it is. So that is called your main jet. I hold it up to a garage light. I should be able to see light through it, which I can't. We'll clean that out too. So Jackson already pulled this gasket off the outside for me. We noticed that we have the emulsion tube in here still. I'm going to pull that out. Here comes the emulsion tube. This goes up inside the carburetor and is the tube that delivers the gas into the airstream. Looks like that. Basically what happens is it sucks a little bit of air in through the sides, shoots it in with the fuel, shoots it up through the top into the carburetor. 